I'm Kim McIntosh and I teach biology at Shadow Mountain High School. And today's presentation is about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants and algae and some bacteria use the energy from sunlight and convert it into sugars that the body can use. And this is an extremely important process to life on Earth because all organisms get their energy from the sun. And they either do this directly from the sun, as in the case of plants. So these plants would be autotrophs. Autotroph means that it creates its own energy. Okay, so these autotrophs, they get their energy directly from the sun. And then there are other organisms that have to get their energy by eating other organisms, and they're called heterotrophs. So these are heterotrophs, and you can see that these are herbivores. So they are eating the grass. They don't eat meat. They just eat the grass, so they're herbivores. But there are carnivores that they eat other animals. So here, you show this, we show this steak, kind of indicating that we would be eating it. And so this, this steak, the energy contained in it, was actually generated from the sun because there's this process, this chain. So it goes from sunlight to plants to things that eat plants and then other things might eat those things that ate the plants, but that energy all came from the sun originally. Okay, so let's talk about exactly how this process happens. There are chloroplasts inside of plant cells. That's the organelle that we talked about. And these chloroplasts, they have an outer membrane and an inner membrane. So they're a double membrane organelle. And inside of the chloroplast, there are these thylakoids. So this individual right here would be a thylakoid. Okay, and these thylakoids, they're stacked on top of each other. So they're in little stacks. Those stacks are called granum. Okay, and the stacks are connected to each other by lamella. And inside the thylakoid is called the lumen. And then all of these granum are in a fluid that's called stroma. Okay, so the chloroplast and inside the chloroplast, the thylakoid, that is where the actual reaction occurs, where the light is absorbed and the chemical reaction occurs that changes that light into the sugar that the plant needs. Let's talk about that absorption of light. All right, so the plant, the chloroplast that's in the plant, it has pigments inside of it. And so chlorophyll absorbs some of the spectrum of visible light. Now, the sunlight that we see, the sunlight has all of the spectrum. So it has all wavelengths. All of these colors are in sunlight. But chlorophyll does not absorb all that entire spectrum. So what it absorbs is what you see here. It absorbs that and it absorbs this, these wavelengths here, okay? So it's absorbing these, but this wavelength, this is reflected back at us, and that's why we see plants as green, because the chlorophyll doesn't absorb that green wavelength, it reflects it back to us. And so you might look at a flower and say, well, wait a minute, this is a plant, and it looks purple to me. Well, the reason it looks purple is it has some different pigments in it, but it doesn't have chlorophyll in the petals of the flower. And so what you're seeing reflected back is this wavelength. All right, so the reaction of photosynthesis. There are three things that are absolutely essential to this reaction. There's light energy, so have to have sunlight. We have to have the carbon dioxide and we have to have the water in order for this reaction to occur, okay? So these are the reactants. Get my pen to work here. These are the reactants, and they're essential 
to this reaction. And then the reaction occurs as indicated by this arrow. And then over here we have the products of the reaction. And the products are sugar and oxygen. Okay, so the oxygen is given off into the atmosphere, but the sugar is contained in the biomass of the plant. So each part of the plant is made up of those sugars that are generated from this reaction. And we call that the biomass. It's basically just the matter that makes up the plant is the biomass. All right, so here's a more detailed image of that reaction. And this actually shows the, um, the balanced chemical equation. So we have six molecules of carbon dioxide, 12 molecules of water, and we have light energy. And the light energy is shown above that reaction arrow because light is not a molecule. Light is a wavelength. So it's not a molecule as we would see with carbon dioxide or water. So we can't really put it here on this side of the reaction. We have to put it above the arrow. All right, and then we have the products of the reaction. So we have one molecule of glucose is generated. We have six molecules of oxygen that are given off to the atmosphere. And then we also have six molecules of water that are generated by that reaction. And this reaction, this occurs in two stages. So we're looking here at the chloroplast. Okay, so this is the chloroplast. And this entire reaction occurs inside of the chloroplast. And you might hear sometimes this is called light and dark reaction, but it's not because um, one of them occurs in the light and one of them occurs in the dark. It's really because this part of the reaction, occur it depends on light. And then there's another part of the reaction, what's sometimes called the dark reaction, that doesn't depend on light. All right, so what we have here is we have the water coming in, we have the light, we have the carbon dioxide, and inside of these thylakoids or grana, we have the light reaction occurring. And it makes what's called ATP and NADPH. And then it goes into something called the Calvin cycle, which is basically just occurring consistently the ATP from the first part of the reaction and the NADPH of the first part of the reaction, they go into the Calvin cycle. And what comes out is we have an NADPH plus and we have an ADP plus a phosphate molecule and we have that sugar molecule, which was the goal of the reaction. All right, there are some things that affect photosynthesis. So temperature has an effect on photosynthesis and if you look at this graph right here, you'll see that the rate of photosynthesis depends on temperature. As the temperature goes up, the rate of photosynthesis goes up to a certain point, but then, you know what, if it gets too hot, what happens? The plant can't take it, and the rate of photosynthesis goes down, okay? And now let's look at light intensity. All right, so this is not temperature. This is how bright the light is. So the rate of photosynthesis, as light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis goes up, but only to a certain point, and then it levels off. So there's sort of this maximum rate of photosynthesis. Once that's reached, it just stays steady. It doesn't matter. You can keep increasing the light intensity, but you're not going to get an increase in, in the rate of photosynthesis after you've reached this level. And then on this graph, we'll see that um, how much carbon dioxide is available to the plant also affects the rate of photosynthesis. And it's a bit like light intensity. As that carbon dioxide concentration is increased, the rate of photosynthesis goes up, but only to a certain point, and then it levels off. And there's like a maximum threshold. Once you reach this level of photosynthesis, you're not going to get anything past that. But then again, it doesn't fall off either. 